Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Overheard Podcast, recorded live right here in beautiful Banff, Alberta. My name is Dan Rudel. With me always, my co-host. We got Maddie Rage. Let's go. Maddie Rage, what's going on? You notice there's only two of us today. Yes. There is a, a missing guest. Well, the guest is still here. We had a little bit of a recording earlier today. Around noon today, we had our boy Zach Andrews in. He was coming in to do an interview early because unfortunately, just like uh, myself and Matt here, he's got a a job. Yeah, those (laughs) suck, man. I don't know why. Yeah, it's just part of life, I guess. You just got to have one. That's it. So, (laughs) you know, um, yeah, we got a great interview. We recorded with him. Uh, We're going to cut to that in just a minute. Before we do that, Matt, how was your week? What'd you get up to? Ooh, the week was busy, sir. We had the uh, old uh, doing two band things, doing a couple DJ sets. Yeah, you've been going podcast. nuts on the... On oh, the, yeah. Like, I forget who it was. I ran into someone at the comedy show, and they're like, uh, what's going on with Matt? Like, he hasn't really been active in the music scene lately. I'm like, uh, you just wait, man. This guy's been more active than ever. He's been busy <laughs> as hell. So, yeah, what have you been up to? What have you been doing? Uh, just uh, working on some bass. We got a uh, big show coming up. Uh, a band I joined up with. We're pl- opening up for Weedus. Sick. Uh, yeah, the Weedus show. Heard about that. Yeah, it's May, uh, in High River. So that'll be fucking sweet. Uh, I'm kind of on the spot because it's my first show with the band. Oh, sick. So Got it's just time. like, yeah, I've just been cramming bass riffs, man. Uh, it's honestly the most bass I've played in my entire life over the course of like the last three weeks. So Right on. It's been yeah. in, like a gentleman's work week worth of bass. So Sick, man. We're right getting, on. We're getting there. But uh, no, I'm stoked. What's, uh, what have you been up to? Well, how was your week? My week was pretty sick. Um, been working a whole bunch. It's been great. It was a pretty, uh, pretty local crowd this weekend. We'll talk about that later. We have a few posts about it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, working. I have actually a hilarious story from work. Um, so yeah, for all of you that know, I work at the Grizzly House, and the Grizzly House kind of known for catering to a specific clientele. Um, back in the day, it used to be a swingers club. Oh God! Now it is a family restaurant. Anyways, we touch on it a little bit. Those that know, they know. We have fun with it. It's a great little. Uh, it's a fun point for me to work with as a server because it uh, makes people laugh. Tons of jokes that are related to that. So, I guess this week I had a group of three guys. Two of them had I forget where they're from. I got a name here. I got to give a big big shout out. Um, to my boy Chase Dimitrioff. He came in <laughs> with two dudes, all right? And they're sitting okay. there enjoying great wine, dining the four course meal, of course. Right, right. Um, and they get into the phones. They're asking about the phones. So I'm like, hey, you know, tell them to low down. It used to be a swingers joint, yada, yada, oh, yada. So they're, you know, we're joking around. They're like, hey, can you hook us up with some ladies? Blah, blah, blah. There was some ladies sitting across the dining room. Anyways, they're chit chatting back and forth. The guys strike out. The ladies leave so they're okay. like hey dan like you why didn't you help us hook us up man like you know i thought like you're pro at this blah 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 and over to my i guess over my left shoulder i had noticed these two ladies dining by themselves that had little bonnets on their head okay now if you don't know what the little bonnets are these were mennonite ladies okay so i go up to the table <laughs> i got this good joke i'm like all right gentlemen well since you struck out with that table if you want a real challenge, you go call that table over there. Oh, and they God. look over and they notice the bonnets and they're like, oh, oh, the Amish girls? And I'm like, well, not Amish. They're Mennonites. So you might <laughs> actually have a chance, right? And then the guy looks at me dead in the eyes, Matt, and he goes, fuck it. At least my chores will be done in the morning. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Yo, we... There's no way. We freaking died. No we died. Way. We had the whole dining room cracking up. I went and told every single person working because it was like probably the second funniest thing that's ever happened to me at the Grizzly House. So big oh shout out to Chase God. Dimitrioff. Uh, so I hope I'm saying that right. If you're out there listening, bro, that was some top tier funny, funny shit. <laughs> Um, so big, big thanks for coming oh, by. That was a great, great time. So that was probably the highlight of my week. Um, well, yeah, I, lots of work. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, was 420? Did you do anything for 420? Uh, oh, yeah, I did. I, uh, there was an online uh, event in VR uh, called Budstock. Nice. So I played the first day of that one. I think it was like around midnight or something like that. Uh, I had a couple drinks, a couple weed drinks. Nice. Uh, chilled out. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a good vibe. Uh, see, Beeps was there actually. 
Beeps in the chat. She was. Uh, oh, were you there? Yo, just Maybe Beeps. Beeps wasn't there. I don't know. I can't remember what what night Beeps is there and what night she's not, but she's around often. So I get celebrating 420 in like states or countries that don't have legalization yet. Like it's a protest, man. I'm from Ottawa. I used to go to right. Majors Hill every year. We'd like skip school. I used to do the one in Toronto, early. the one at uh, Queen's Park there. Right. But like yeah. these days, man, like 420 should be canceled. It's a protest. We already won, <laughs> dude. Like, <laughs> it's just a day for the stoners to have fun and get high. Like, I don't know. They, they still have St. Patty's Day and booze is legal. So I get like, it. I'm just joking around. But um, just beeps in the chat says, catch in v- catch me in VR anytime. So uh, <laughs> not just performing on 420. Um, maybe we can get some links up later for that. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Anyways, enough about us. We have a great interview this week with our boy, Zach Andrews. Came by earlier. We're having some coffee, shooting the shit right around noon time. Uh, he took some time out of his day to come and have a chat with us about comedy, about living in Banff, yeah. how he got here, why he stays here. Um, so I think maybe we should cut to it right now. What do you think, Matt? I think that's a great idea, man. Let's get to it. Let's do it. Welcome, everybody, to the Overheard Podcast. Our interview section today, we got a very, very special guest. We got one of Banff's newest and I want to say one of Bam's funniest comedians with us here. We got Zach Andrews. How you doing, brother? Hey, Let's I'm good, go. Man. Let's go. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. I'm, I'm super excited to be here. Heck no. yeah. Fuck yeah. We, uh, when did we see you first? That was the first comedy show we went to a few weeks back. Yeah, I want to say close to a month ago, was it? Yeah, yeah I think it was middle of March, that one. Yeah, yeah middle so. of March. It was awesome. Um, we showed up. You're kind of a sleeper out there, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Zach walks up on stage, you know, looking unassuming. He's like, hey, it's, like, it's my third set ever. And then brought the fucking place down. Oh, it was, was, yeah. oh, was fucking hilarious. I died. And I just love doing it. Like, uh, it's made me so happy, just like the comedy scene and how much it's growing in town and stuff. Nice. It's been awesome, honestly. Big shout out to Chewy and Gene for putting the shows on. Um, Heck yeah. What are you up to today, man? It's a beautiful day in Banff. You said yeah. you just got back from vacation? Yeah, so I was actually back home in Ontario. Um, we'll talk about where I'm from later, I assume. Let's jump into uh, it right now. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Home, so yeah. Uh, I grew up small town, um, uh, about 45 minutes south of Peterborough, Ontario. Okay. A small Ooh. farm town called Campbellford, Ontario. Cool. So... Um, yeah, I grew up there, uh, born uh, in city in Belleville, Kick Ontario, oh, yeah, and then yeah. I grew up uh, in Campbellford my whole life, went to high school there, graduated high school, and then uh, went to culinary school. I'm a chef. Okay, um, nice. cool. That's my main gig, main gig, and then uh, laughing gigs on the side, you know? Yeah, comedy right gigs. On. Where'd you go to school? I went to the Canadian Food and Wine Institute at Niagara College, Damn, so nice. I just did a two-year culinary program there. Um, graduated there 2015, moved out east uh, to St. Andrews, New Brunswick for the summer. So I was living in St. Andrews, New Brunswick. That was pretty cool. I was working at the Algonquin Resort, which was, uh, it had just switched over from Fairmont to Marriott at the time. So oh, okay. it was Marriott when I worked there. Okay. And yeah, I worked on the golf course for the summer and stuff um, in the club. It was called uh, Clubhouse there on the golf course. It was sick. And then, uh, yeah, been... Uh, Moved back home for eight months, and uh, one of my buddies that I met out there was just like, "Want to go to Banff?" And I was just like, "As they do, sick." And, and I so was just like, kind of by chance, and just decide your buddy brought it up to you, and you're just yeah, said, he hey, brought why it up not? to me, and then uh, I think it was like April at the time. I applied for a bunch of jobs, had like uh, Skype interviews at the time because yeah, this yeah. was back oh, in oh yeah yeah back in 2016. Yeah, yeah. I had uh, three interviews with the same company. Wow, and I was like, yeah, I don't Seems know, excessive three yeah. interviews. I was like, okay, weird. But just for different positions or like? No, like, just oh. like, I don't know. Extreme vetting for Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was just, like, and then, this uh, kid goes through three interviews, he can come work. Yeah, I haven't, uh, didn't hear back from them for three and a half months. August 1st, I got an email and they're like, uh, congrats, you got the job. You start August 8th, seven Same. days from now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> they was, take three months to get back to yeah, you. Yeah, then they're just like, we need yeah, you I now. Yeah, uh, I was working at a uh, fine dining restaurant in my uh, hometown, small hometown. Yeah, yeah uh, cool. Yeah, it was sick. Um, yeah, moved uh, here on seven days notice. I told my mom, Jeez. called her at work, and I was like, I was checking my email in the fridge at my job that I was working at, and I was like, what the? I was like, called my mom, and I was like, um, I just got a job in like Alberta. And she's like, <laughs> sick. 
So oh my god, me. we got to go get you a suitcase. We got to do this. We got to do that. You know how it is. Just so. Give me your notice and roll, eh? Like, yeah. Dude, just, just like, sorry, man. I, I would give you two weeks, but I uh, can't really do that. So Yeah. And uh, my boss at the time, his name's Ron. He uh, owns a small restaurant in my hometown. Nice. Shout out to Ron. Ron's a legend. Big <laughs> shout out to uh, Ron. I think one of the main reasons I'm the chef I am today is because of him. So yeah, cool. shout out to him. Sick. Let's go. And uh, yeah, he was just said... Uh, if you don't do this, you'll regret it for the rest of life. And eight years later, I'm still here in Banff. So Damn, right I, think, on. I think Ron was right. You know? <laughs> no so, joke. Ron nailed yeah, it. Eh? Yeah, yeah. So. I think we all kind of have that that kind of story. There's one for me. I was a week before I moved to Banff. I used to work in a ski shop, and one of the reps came up to me and was like, "Oh, you're moving to Banff?" He's like, "I'll see you in three months. Like, you're never gonna make it out there." Hmm. Uh, the I, was three, like, I call yeah, it. Like, I call it the three month probation period. It's like uh, when you start a new job, you got three months where if you really fuck up, they're just like. They don't have to give a reason to fire you. True. It's kind of bamf. It's like if you if you really fuck up, you just get bamfed and you just gotta go home. And you gotta like, go. You yeah. see it all the time. People come in like three months, they're like, Yeah, I'm, I don't I don't party that much. And then a week later they're oh, like, yeah. Well, I only party like on the weekends with the boys. And then they're like, mm -hmm. Well, I was out till like five AM and then things that's, definitely that's tend it. to snowball that's in those it. situations so a very typical story like all of us in banff got suggested it from a friend came here finally got yeah. a job um where are you working now yeah my uh high rollers cool. i am the sous chef there yeah, nice. so, um, high rollers. yeah we don't have a head chef at high rollers so i'm kind of like uh basically head chef not really okay, it's, cool. uh, yeah it's kind a good dynamic so uh it's owned by bhc obviously yeah, uh, absolutely as they do yeah, as they know, do. As as they do yeah. Love working for the company, and yeah, it's been great. Um, I've been with them for like three to five years now. Between oh, cool. High Rollers, Sasquatch, I uh, was a busser in town at Sasquatch before nice, pre-COVID nice. and stuff for like three years. Okay, nice. Just uh, yeah, I uh, had a lot of FOMO and couldn't afford to go out, and I was like, why don't I just work at the club? That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly why yeah, I started yeah. bartending because I was a drunk and I was like, hey, if I work behind the bar, I can be yeah. at the party all the time. Uh oh. Like, um, you, so chug a, you chug a Red Bull, you feel like you're drunk. You know what I mean? 100%. Like, just oh, bombing yeah. around, bomb around the dance floor with my bus bin. Like, <laughs> I remember yeah, college yeah. slamming like six monsters in a night. Just, you get, you're like, I got to stay up, get this project done. I did it one day, I drank six of them. I'm like, Holy man, I gotta calm down. It's like bad speed mm. to can, man. Oh yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to drink six. But yeah, I remember you from around town, from coming to the Pump and Tap. Like, Still go there. Uh, That's my good spot. With nice. Bucky, big shout out to Bucky. Yeah, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Right. I actually lived with uh, yeah the Buck Barrels there for probably on and off five years. Nice. Um, uh, yeah, I was living with them up until last June actually. Okay, cool. sick. Or last yeah last June. Nice. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, he's like my how, BAMF dad, you know? He's yeah, like, that's uh, kind of how, like, like yeah. I kind of know you has been like through Bucky because Bucky used to be one of my good boys that uh, came down to the, to the old pump back in the day. Nice. Um, what keep, well, what keeps you here? Like, you've been, you said you've been here, what, eight years now? Yeah, yeah. So, um, obviously, like, um, I'm a chef by trade, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, this is kind of like the perfect town for it, right? Like, for sure. No I, of work. I, I hate cities and it's like, I'm not a city guy. I don't drive. I don't have a car. It's right. like, I just kind of rely on, you know, getting around on by feet and stuff like cool. that. And I just, it's the perfect mix of like, you can live in a town where it's so busy yet so small. Like, I just love that, you know, I can go anywhere like, or I can't go anywhere without someone being like, yo, Zach, what's up? Yeah, for and sure. I assume yeah, after this episode pod. drops, it'll be even worse, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially exactly. with, you know, a bit of the like casuals that I may not know, or like the people that have been here one to two years that yeah. aren't uh, as well known to me. They'll for just sure. be like, oh, yo, you're on the pod. What's up, man? Oh, you do comedy? When's your next show? Yeah. So it's great how this just opens doors and stuff. So do you have any shows on the lineup? Or? I don't actually. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you're kind of sporadic in the lineup when it comes to the local shows, right? Like we all got jobs. We all we yeah, don't do this so, professionally. We all got to um, go to our jobs. Yeah, like I'd obviously like to take a bigger step into it, but obviously with my job, it's kind of tough being in management and like being... Like I work, you know, one to 11 kind of thing, yeah. five days a week. And yep. it's like, I can't do mornings. I can't do nights. And it's like most of the comedy shows start at eight. For sure. It's like, yeah. I, I can sneak out sometimes and make them and stuff. And Gene's really good about, he's like, hey, here's the date you want to do five minute gig. And <laughs> usually I'm pretty good for it. And be like, yeah, I can do that. I think I've done four or five now. Nice. So uh, yeah, Gene's been a uh, big, big help in uh, getting my, uh, comedy career started and uh, nice. well he's a yeah. solid dude we had him on he was that last week week before that was like three weeks ago yeah, yeah three a couple weeks ago. weeks ago now that was two oh, weeks geez. ago now but um 
We're, yeah, big shout out to Gene. Big oh, shout out to the Banff comedy scene. If you guys haven't been out to check out a sh- comedy no show in Banff. Yeah, shout um, out to everybody in the comedy scene. You know, uh, Chewy, Gene, Kyle. Uh, Tara's been great. So uh, Tara, I actually met Tara. Tara. Yeah, so she was on the pod too. I yeah. watched a great episode, by the way. Shout oh, out to Tara. Nice, man. She's hilarious. Yeah, so uh, Tara's been a great mentor for me, you know, messaging back and forth and just being like, you're like funny. Just like come up with like situations and you can like make any like a great joke out of any situation just with like how like quick witted and stuff I am. So Tara's such a good supporter of comedy. You know what I mean? Like she really goes out of her way to make the comics kind of feel welcome and supported. That's kind of what I felt from being at the show, Hmm. making sure they get paid a little bit when they can, you know, that's That's a big part of keeping talent, like coming back to your venue. Cause I know like, like I said, I've played in bands for years and years and it's like, you go to a certain venue, it might not be the nicest venue, you might not have the biggest crowd, but if the management treats you like... Exactly. They take good care you know, of you yeah, and want to like, be back, right? It, it makes a big difference, right? You're like, well, fuck, man. Let's go back to like, let's go back to that club. Like, We love the owners. Like, They're, they're awesome. Like, The promoter was good. That stuff goes a long way. If you go to a show and your promoter's a dick and the guy running the bar is a dick and they're just like, fuck you, there's no drink tickets and you're not getting paid. It's like, well... Like you see like more we, of a burden yeah, than... Yeah, a- yeah. It's like, <laughs> and it's straight up. I've played shows like especially being in a metal band you, you'll play a show and it's like you show up and they're just like well fuck now we have to like move tables for this fucking metal band and it's just like you're it, it can be that way like it, it, not every venue is the same right so it's, and then you're in the corner of some yeah, shitty venue and yeah. you're just like thanks guys thanks. yeah and you're popped in there and they don't give you nothing they're just like yeah can we have some tables and chairs no it's like <clears throat> okay like i figured it yeah. just to clarify it could not be more the opposite of that vibe yeah, no at doubt. The oh, yeah, Crown yeah. or at the lodge we've no, yeah. some, oh, some great yeah, great shows awesome. um okay. what has inspired you to get into comedy why did you decide all of a sudden bam we're gonna start doing sets uh, is that something you've always aspired to do something you've been thinking about for a long time no like uh i've always like just big been big into like i like comedy and stuff like that so uh i think I think what got me into comedy was uh, actually, it's not related, but it is related in a sense, is rap battles. So back in oh, like 2013, oh. 2014, King of the Dot. Yeah. I don't know if you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. YouTube videos. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I was like huge into King of the Dot. I actually uh, had signed up to do some battles and stuff in Toronto. Oh, cool. And I was just like, cool. but like for me, I wasn't so much into the rap, but like back in 2012, 2015 area, a lot of the rap battles were just like roast battles. Yeah, they're like diss battles, which yeah. like which is basically so jokes, right? I would like, say like my biggest inspiration was this guy named Pat Stay. He was like a Canadian legend. He actually passed away like two years ago. Oh damn! Um, yeah, he's like kind of the founder of like the Canadian battle scene. Okay, started cool. out in uh, Nova Scotia. Super yeah, cool. There was Pat one Stay. dude from my neighborhood that was doing that. I forget his name. God, if it come back to me, he's from Ottawa and he just like, he made it big, ended up going on BT and doing like other. Oh, battles. that's Sharon. Sharon. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, so, uh, yeah, Sharon actually, uh, battled against Pat for the King of the Dot title okay, and okay. he lost. So Pat was like this legend. He was like probably top three, like biggest battle rappers of all time. And, uh, King of the Dot actually does a memorial fundraiser for him every year. Yeah, cool. It's an event that it's called uh, stay forever. Oh, and cool. uh, yeah, it's a big thing. But yeah, just his like his style of rap was just like roast comedy and stuff like that. Yeah, and cool. that's like kind of what got me into that like sort. And just like, man, I can remember like all of his lines. And right he's just on. like, and uh, yeah, there's one that sticks in my head, especially being in this town. And it's like, uh, you're, he's like, your uh, pen, or he's like, you sniff coke through the pen that you write with. So your lines are just a story on how pathetic your life is. Oh, I love that one. I so love that one. Is that how you would describe your comedy style? Like a little bit of the, you know, roasty, roasty. Kinda? Yeah. Like I, I just, I love like the roast. Um, Banff isn't like as good for it, but the type of comedy that I enjoy to watch is uh, like crowd work. Yeah. You can't really do sure. crowd work in Banff. The People shows are, are pretty... Like, yeah, it's not like a... Everybody's so, like, chill here, I think, is what it is. They're just like, whatever, man, make fun of me. I'm Australian. Honestly, like, I just yeah. think it's not a... I'm from Ontario. I don't care. <laughs> like, it's just not a super seasoned comedy crowd yeah, yet, yeah. right? Like, yeah. people, like, being at the shows, like, I didn't say too much when I was there. No. Like, we're not... The crowd's not really giving as much to the acts up there as you would see. Is like, say you went to Yuck Yucks or, like, a comedy club let's say right where that's the main focus right like people are definitely more 
I feel like more likely to interact with you in that sense. And people don't want to get roasted. You know what I no, mean? Exactly. Like people are scared. Like I, I want to, I, I don't want to tango man, with it. a pro up there. You know, you, I, mean? I work, I, man, you work in a kitchen. You can like, you could say the dumbest, dumbest possible thing possible to like your, your head chef. They'll just be like, that's good, dude. That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, for you sure. can, yeah. yeah. And you're like you can get away with some pretty, like, you oh, probably shouldn't. You probably shouldn't say that to another person. But like, to kitchen, the right kitchen humor is different. To, to, to the right I mean? person, you're just like, oh, that's awesome. Well, I feel like that's like kind of the perfect kind of testing ground for right. jokes and stuff, right? Like they're always for jamming sure. back there. I know. I love going back there, giving my two cents in the kitchen with the boys. My first two sets were literally just like me roasting my kitchen stuff. <laughs> it was just like I was like, you know, they like talk about going out. I had like a oh, if I wanted to hear stories from an attic, I'd read about Anne Frank joke. Like that was oh, yeah, God. like stuff like what? that. So that was that was the one in my. I said that in my very first set, <laughs> and people so are like, good. "This guy doesn't mess around." You know what I mean? For sure. Just like, like honestly, man, you were so unassuming walking up there. Like I was like. My first impression was like, mm. oh, I know this guy. Yeah, yeah. Seems kind of timid up there. And just kind of your, and then as soon as the first joke landed, you got <laughs> yeah. that first laugh. It's like, you You're opened like, oh, up. Oh, here we go. And it was yeah. like, buckle in. Oh, and like your ender was phenomenal, tied into the first joke. Like oh, callbacks, yeah. I think, is one of the, the true. I got like, another callback for you, actually. So I watched the episode with Gene, and you were talking about how me, I was like a bit uh, shy and stuff like yeah, that. And yeah, Gene yeah. talked about the joke where he's like, give it up for Zach. He's a local legend, you know, blah, blah, blah. Hands me the mic. And he's like, Oh, he called me a pedophile, whatever. Yeah. And the joke I actually said was, uh, Gene looks like he's the front man in a metal metal band, but still drives a pedo van. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. That was the joke. So a little callback from that Gene podcast. Shout out to Gene once Shout again. Out so out to Gene. Yeah, yeah. Great. Don't so, want to yeah. catch him in a van. And, uh, right, I first. know you'll like that, you know, metal van. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So. Like, so what? Do you get nervous going up there? Oh yeah. My first Big set, time? I was like. I did like three jokes and then I was like, I read off my phone for my first set. Oh, like I yeah, had yeah. had it all pre-recorded, but like it was like so dry out. delivery because I was just reading and I didn't even give time for people to laugh. I was just like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> oh, and then sure. I just oh, yeah, yeah. like got like massive reactions and stuff like that. And I was like shaking and I was like, oh, <laughs> like I, and then I got like a round of applause. They're like, you're killing it, man. You're killing it. So like this Gotten just the better. scene is like so supportive yeah like um, i've gotten a lot better and stuff and i've uh practiced a lot more right. and just like go go over jokes so and just like rehearsal you think and stuff knowing like your that. material a little more is like kind of calms your nerves a little bit more before you go on stage or is it still the same so regardless? i've actually um i didn't know like what was the expectation of comedy like i didn't know if if i forgot like a couple lines if they would like roast me and be like oh you know this guy's not very good now I like I have a topic and I freestyle everything. Nice. That's I don't awesome. go in like I have like three or four punchlines. So that my style of comedy is like I think of like a situation. I have maybe two to three like big like haymakers. Nice. And then I just like freestyle the kind rest of cliff of notes and, and roll from there. Stuff like that. And cool. just like no, like I'm a pretty creative guy where I can just like whether it's doing accents or just like facial expressions or just like nice. What? Yeah, like <laughs> your you movements know, like, plays a yeah, lot yeah. into it yeah. for sure. It's like oh, yeah. well, body Tara, language on stage is huge. Tara was talking about that a lot when she was uh, here as well. She she said like straight up, you could deliver a joke one way, it flops, and just like a different you know inflection in your voice or like a different look on your face, and it just nails. It's funny how that works, right? So I got to ask you, was that like coming off timid? Was that just an act, or was that a little half and half because it played into that yeah, work, perfectly. Yeah, as yeah, soon as you like opened up, it was like you like you caught the crowd almost by surprise. It was so like, Holy I'm crap. like I'm a very like you know uh, what's the extroverted like introvert. I'm like okay, okay. You know, once I'm in my comfort zone, like you'll think that I am like the like life of the party stuff like that. But like mm. I'm also the type to just like give you a head nod, go sit at a bar and play <laughs> games on my phone at a bar for two hours Fair. and have like three beers at the end of a bar. And Been like, I'm, that. I'm just that guy that like, I can go sit in a bar and just like chill and just do my own thing. Or like some nights I'm just like, friends are here. Like, let's, let's go. rage. Yeah, let's you know what I mean? Like, yeah, let's yeah, rage. So. Well, we got to give you some props because that was, Heck yeah. that was pretty sick. That was a no sick joke. set that we saw there for sure. Hey, Who are some of the, you said you, you're a big fan of stand up comedy. Who are some yeah. of the guys that you're into? Yeah, so uh, like, you like said, I, crowd work. Yeah, like. crowd work. So I like um, Jeff R. Curry. Um, nice. Uh, He's like 
all my clips right now is yeah. Jeffrey Curry. Oh, yeah? yeah, I used to get like Stavros mm, Halkios uh, does a lot of oh, okay. yeah. I get him. Stuff. I get a uh, sing. I forget his first name, but his uh, last is it name's... the guy off Flagrant? Does Maybe he do the Flagrant. Podcast I know he's like an Indian gentleman, and uh, he shows up, and it's just like him like roasting other <laughs> Indians, and it's like so great. I like him, AJ Wilkerson, Cam Patterson, Kill Tony, obviously Kill oh, Tony. Yeah. Cam yeah. Patterson is. Did you see yeah. friggin' Ric Love Flair on Kill Tony? I did, yeah. He was yeah. like wasted. He was <laughs> That's like, Ric Flair. Yeah, yeah, man. He was like like black out. You're like, Whoa, Oh yeah. Blah, blah, blah. That guy's not known for putting oh, yeah. the bottle down. That's for <laughs> yeah. sure. What does he say? He's like Rolex wearing, limousine riding, jet flying. Oh Ooh, no. major yeah. boy, Ooh. baby. Yeah. Oh dude, it's crazy. Yeah, like, he did a rap uh, rap video with Amigos, and I was like, Did he? Yeah, yeah it, they have a song called Ric Flair Drip. Yeah, oh, it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. He's got this yeah. like rhinestone jacket on and he's like geriatrically <laughs> bobbing around in this rap video. It's, it's with yeah. the Migos, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm a big fan of wrestling and stuff too. So. That's sick, right? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, the old, like I used to grow up uh, watching very old school wrestling when they still had uh, like Paul Bear for mm. Undertaker. He's like, oh, the Undertaker. Oh my mm. God. Oh, yeah. yeah, Paul Bear was the bomb, yeah, dude. Yeah. Bushwhackers, uh, hack, like Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Who else was back in the day? Oh yeah, like the, like Bret Hart and all those guys, obviously. But yeah, oh, Canadian man. legend, Canadian legend. Yeah, yeah, Brett, we should get Bret true. Hart on the podcast, bro. That would be that the Hitman, fucking sick, dude. Bret, the motherfucking Hitman. We'll Hart. have to do some digging on that for well, sure. One of the best mottos ever: the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Oh, that's know? right. That's yeah, right. so sick. Yeah, yeah. My case. He has a bar in Calgary. Uh, Hitman's my... in the yeah, 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 Calgary yeah, yeah. Casino and Cowboys there. We'll have to go check it out. Yeah, my it, favorite clip ever is just say it to my face, Bill Goldberg. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> you guys are going off. Yeah, say it to my, yeah. fa- yeah, my face, Bill Goldberg, and just like chirps him so bad. <laughs> yeah, if you're into wrestling, you'll love it because he has like all the um, I call like, memorabilia. Uh, memorabilia. Nice. There's like a massive showcase, all of oh, this like WCW sick. belts. You, nice. You'd appreciate that stuff cool. for that'd sure. Be cool. nice. And like all the photos. Is that right downtown? Um, it's in Cowboys Casino. Oh shit! Yeah. Well, so let's go check that out. They have a bar. Let's there. go yeah. there and see if we can get an interview. Do yeah, some it's reconnaissance called, work. It's called Hitman's. Yeah, nice. it's sick. We'll yeah. have an overheard night at the <laughs> Cowboys Casino. Um, moving away from comedy a little bit, on to some more Banff stuff. You okay. lived here a long time. You lived here pre-COVID. Yes, sir. You lived here after COVID. What's your thoughts on the uh, Banff Ave pedestrian closure? Good question. Good question. Um, obviously, being in the kitchen industry, like in the restaurant industry, I'm kind of like more towards it. Because, like, it creates more business opportunities and stuff like that. Um, I don't drive, so it doesn't affect me too much with, like, road closures and stuff. I know it's obviously a big deal for a lot more other people. For sure. Um, but, yeah, um, I, I'm kind of in favor of it. Um, one thing I don't like is that it takes, like, the foot tra- traffic off the sidewalks. Like, storefronts, they're kind of just all walking down. It's great yeah. for patios and restaurants and yeah. stuff, which I'm obviously mm-hmm. a huge supporter of. I've been cooking for 15 years now. Started working at my yeah. grandfather's cafe when Amazing. I was like 12 or 13. Wild thanks. Yeah. That's a long time, man. I know. I think about it too. I'm like, man, I've been cooking off and on since like 99 now. I'm just like, that's... And like, especially here the last 10 years, pretty much I've been cooking solid. So it's, yeah, it adds up quick, man. You don't think it like just time goes by way quick in the kitchen. So if we have one for the pedestrian zone. That's a, a rare opinion here on the Overheard podcast oh, these really? days. But everyone is a, entitled man, to Man, I'm into own. it. I don't mind it at all because, I, like, I, like he said, I don't drive. It doesn't bother hmm. me. Like, I get why people are concerned, especially with the safety of, you know, if shit goes down across the bridge, you're kind of... Yeah. As, you're kind of well on that issue, one. Right? Oh. So that's, like, that's the only thing I can say about it. But I like it, man. I like being able to go down there and chill and I can just walk and not have to worry about getting run over other than anybody ripping an e-bike down there. But whatever. Mm-hmm. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I've had some pretty pretty close calls with an e-bike, but... I don't know. For me, last week... Other than that, it, it's was on. the last long weekend. It would have been last weekend or the weekend before uh, that? Uh, Easter weekend? Easter, Easter weekend. And I think the was... was open and it was beautiful and it was almost like back in the day. It felt like, you know, yeah, yeah, like I true. wouldn't mind a summer like that. You know, keep the people moving, keep them around. Yeah, um, yeah I don't know. I don't know. I'm... Locals know better than to use a sidewalk anyways. Exactly. Yeah. Like... I walked down the sidewalk Easter weekend. I made a mistake and yeah. I, was like, <laughs> I, I got uh, berated by a woman because I uh, actually recently bought this uh, New Jersey Devil's jacket at a thrift shop. Yeah. And she's like, supporting the devil on Easter. 
<laughs> oh wow! I was like, it's a hockey team, lady. <laughs> like for real? I swear. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mem- remember those people that used to stand down on the corner there, right in front of the like the Mount or not Mount Royal, the uh, King Eddie. Oh, the Christian people. I forget what they were. Pro- they were protesting. Like, um, I don't know if we should say it actually. Um, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Either yeah, way, yeah, yeah, either, way word. Yeah. Oh, okay. either, yeah. either way, they were insane. Like they were just like I'm like well, go somewhere else. It's bad. Like, I got a pretty mm. good one with this. So we have these stickers at work. Um, they're from back in the day. So they used to have these funny stickers that they gave out at our work. One of them was like mushroom hunting, a world's deadliest sport. And the only ones that we had left were, God, please save me from your followers. <laughs> <laughs> Almost got a spit thing. <laughs> so I was at work one day and then these people were loving it so much. I'm like, oh, let me see if I can get you like a postcard or something, blah, blah, blah. Mm. So I'm looking around. I couldn't find any postcards, couldn't find anything. And then I find this sticker and I pull it out and I look back at them and I'm just like, are you guys religious? And they're like, <laughs> yes. And I was like, oh, because this is the only thing I had for them was <laughs> this number six. Like, God, please save me from your followers. They were cool about it, though. They're just like, um, we're going to pass on that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking great. That's great. Um, Thank you. Any advice on any newcomers? Yeah, I like if you're asked, even but... just considering it, like, just do it. And there's so many people like, man, all the Aussies in town, like, you have a 20 minute conversation with half of these Australians and you're just like, this True. may be one of the funniest guys I've ever met in my life. True. For sure. Like and everyone in like, has a story, has some funny, some fucked up that happened to them along the line. Yeah. So well, like, it's just the transient nature of it, right? Like you've got so many different, you got so many different takes on so many different topics that it's like, man, you're kind of sitting on a gold mine here. If you can get these guys to just like, exactly put 10 minutes of work into it and be like, Hey man, here's some funny shit from back in Oz. Like, yeah, it's true though. They'll just say like, you can just have a conversation with them. They're just saying complete run of the mill vanilla shit for them. To you, it's funny. It's insanity. Oh, yeah. it's like, it's what insanity. is this guy going on? Yeah. This is it's wild. Awesome. But yeah, like like I said, man, just get your foot in the door. Nice. You know, we have a lot of uh, opportunities here. Like shows happen through every three to five weeks at this point. For sure, there actually are some shows coming up. I know this Friday. At the Lux Cinema, Tara's right, company right. is running. Yes, yeah, Scott, uh, Scott Dumas. Dumas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so, be a good um, one. yeah, Scott Dumas, uh, Tara Buchanan, and then it's a uh, Ben Cannon. Okay, never sick. heard of him, but uh, apparently he's pretty good. Yeah. If Tara's got him in, I'm sure he's hilarious. Yeah. There's yeah. no no shortage of uh, good comedy shows from top shelf productions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so something like that. <laughs> Tara, big big shout out. Thank yeah. you for coming on the pod. Thank you for organizing all these great shows. I I think I'm gonna go to that. My friend is doing a fundraiser in town on Friday, so I also wanted to do that. And there's like a bit of overlap on time. So what's the fundraiser? It's uh for my friend Cheryl. She is uh running a marathon and she's doing like a bit of a fundraiser for I believe I don't want to misquote, but I think it's Heart and Stroke Foundation. Cool. Okay, stuff like that. Right yeah um yeah so i think it's like a bit of a like locals thing uh she had a i think she created like a facebook page and just invited people down to join her 50 50 ticket stuff like that at cool. uh sizzlers on friday nice okay sweet so one of bands um, i venues. believe it's eight eight nice. or nine nine eight i don't know nine. if it's like an open thing but Okay. I'm sorry if I uh, <laughs> threw your private function under the bus, but <laughs> yeah, shout out to uh, Heart and Stroke Foundation and fundraising for that. And uh, no doubt. yeah, a little uh, athlete there, Cheryl. That'll, shout out Cheryl. That'll, that'll be right fun night, though. Big, that's, big uh, that's the new, it's where the paddock was. Yes. Yeah. So in I the Mount Royal Hotel good. down in the basement, um, Banff Sizzler is one of the newer venues. I've seen mm-hmm. them popping up on social media. Lately. I'm sure you know Hoops, Mark Cooper. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so yes, Hoops absolutely. is actually the GM there. Oh, now. cool. Okay. Big yeah, shout so, out. Yeah. That's. Uh, he was like my uh, big bro. Yeah, he calls me little bro. Nice. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my guy. One of our uh, previous Oops. guests, uh, big shout out barbershop Kyle. Okay, uh, yeah. he's working down there as well. I think he said he was bartending. I ran into him uh, in the alleyway there about a week ago, and he's like, "Yeah, man, come check it out. They got arcades. They got like buck hunter. Pool yeah, they have like a and... little game area in the back. So yeah, there's yeah. like one of those punch machines. Yeah, I saw them moving it in. I saw it out on a they trailer have a the other day. Set? Like a uh, what's the uh, cornhole, cornhole, and, oh, cornhole yeah. tournaments. Dude, That's, let's they have go. Cornhole set up. Yeah, I was in there Sunday night for maybe twenty minutes. They have like two brand new pool tables set up in the corners. Uh, there's like maybe this was 
10, 15 on Sunday. There's oh, like cool. 70 people in there. Damn. Yeah. So they may have figured out a use for that space after the last 10 years after they tore out the paddock. It's that been locals trial and error down there. there. Yeah. Um, I know for sure that they have a great stage, though. Yeah, so. we're uh, we're going to look into doing some comedy shows there. and Cool. And uh, hopefully if it sticks around for the f- long term, uh, I'd like to do some shows there. That'd be cool. Sure. Well, yeah. it'd be nice to have another venue in Banff. We don't have a whole lot of choices as far as like if you play in a band there's a couple options for yeah. venues and that's it like rose mills and that's pretty much it i think right yeah. sometimes elk but like yeah, yeah it's not really like a stage no, 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 setup, no, 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 you know no. what i mean i know they do shows at the pump once in a while too but um mm-hmm. it's pretty cool yeah it's like yeah they did not... like a big metal show there last yeah. week actually yeah it was awesome yeah, it was, uh, was that casey put that one on yeah, Casey. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. did. It looked like there was some gnarly metal going on down there. For well, we sure. should. Uh, we'll get him on the uh, podcast here once we get uh, rolling. Yeah, you'd I think... be big into that. He's big into metal. Oh yeah. I think he did like a metal fest in Canmore yeah. recently. Yeah, I played, or it's coming. I, we, did we do two of those? I think we played two of them now. Uh, we kind of we're not playing that one this year. We're kind of just getting back into it with the metal band. But uh, yeah. I'm cool. a busy boy. I joined up with another band, so now I got two on the go and uh, DJing and podcasting. So. And we will dive into that too. We're going to dive a yeah. little bit more into the music scene here. I think that might be our next uh, focus coming up is some musical acts, some fun <laughs> yeah. stuff. Um, Zach, just one last question for you. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? You plan on sticking around Banff? Is this the life for you? Good Are you question. going to be a lifer have, like us or what? I have no idea. I, uh, yeah, I, I like to think I'm going to be here for a long time, but you know, life comes at you fast. So, you know. True. So no don't promises. Know. Get those. Yeah, I don't want to get too much into it, but you know, my answer was probably different than it was last week. So, yeah. okay, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, yeah. I feel that way often too. Yeah. Going yeah. home, maybe. Uh, uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, big yeah, things. Big things. We'll things. see. Okay, <laughs> so, yeah. We'll keep us posted. Keep us yeah, posted. Yeah. But so, um, yeah. no, man, that was fun. Thank you so much for uh, for coming to hang out and uh, yeah. shed some light on your recently budding comedy uh yeah, career it's yeah. been great so far so oh, man you got yeah. you got some talent i'd say just hammer yeah. down man like you could for sure keep you writing could, jokes you could do i it. just spent 10 days on my mom's couch so you know a lot of uh there you go a lot of um uh, writing a lot of writing and stuff yeah. and nice yeah a lot of nostalgic feelings too right Being it's back crazy home. like how my brain works it's just like i just see something and i was like oh that's a joke i can <laughs> think of a joke nice. any uh any crazy experiences lately or what um with like life or with... did you come up with anything uh any any crazy experiences oh yeah that yeah had, yeah uh, so, happened that were funny lately? um <laughs> this is a uh, overheard in banff exclusive so uh yeah i um i met someone recently um we're kind of seeing where it's going they live in a different province so okay we'll uh we'll see but yeah um they're just like oh they joke to me and they're like we're gonna have to have phone sex and i was like that phone like, sex nice. yeah i was like i'm already awkward as it is like i don't i don't want to do this like how does this work like is it in yet like <laughs> like yeah um but yeah it was like they're like oh like you should like send me like voice memos or something and i was like oh it's not really like a good time they're like oh just do it so i was like okay whatever just like i was like oh yeah <laughs> you know what I, mean? like, I was like yeah <laughs> and then uh they're like, why is there so much noise? Like, where are you? I was like, in an airport. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, uh, yeah, don't open your phone. And I was like, what? And I was like, I already opened it. And I was like, oh, yeah, um, shit. And I'm like, looking over my shoulder. There's like 100 people in line to board this flight. Oh, like, I'm no. literally in flight. Oh, no. Like, what was the message? Oh, it was like a little spicy pick. And I was just like, <laughs> caught me off guard. Yeah, so... uh yeah, get to the front desk and, you know, they get on the walkie-talkie and they're like, can you just step aside? I think they thought I had, like, a Glock or something in my pocket. Not even kidding. <laughs> this, like, this dude, like, looking like Chewy, like, he's like, yeah, can you just step aside for a second? And then he just looks at me, doesn't even, like, he just looks at me and he goes, he's good. Looks, looks at front desk and they're like, he's good. He's like, I'm so sorry about that, brother. Like, didn't even, like, say anything. And I was like... That was like awkward. No, that, was, that, was, that was a little awkward. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, she's like, why'd you hang up on me? I was like, 
and I was getting like an over the pants handy from a dude that looks like Action Bronson. So like, <laughs> you know, like not uh, not very uh, pleasant. So yeah, a bit a uh, bit traumatizing. So yeah, not uh, not into that. So, Damn. Yeah, so yeah. phone sex, maybe we'll have to weigh the yeah. voice memos if you're out there <laughs> doing long distance with your girl. You got a lesson here from our boy Zach to yeah. uh, watch it at the airport. For not sure. even my girl. But yeah, we'll see. Well, there you go. So did not yet. So did you just show Buddy the picture and he's like, let him go. Not even. He just like he just knew. <laughs> he knows, just knew. He's like this. I don't kid. know if they thought I was packing, but yeah. Hey, I guess that's a definitely compliment. not packing. <laughs> yeah, so oh, yeah, there's my awkward uh, airport experience. My uh, mom's gonna listen to this too. So uh, sorry, mom. Yeah. Sorry, mom. But sorry, uh, mom. thank you for that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a big overshare. So big overshare. Yeah. yeah Nothing I do wrong that. with that. I do that often. I'm like, why did I say that? I didn't need to say that at all, but I did. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, damn. Well, that's oh, good. Stuff. Yeah, a little uh, overheard exclusive. We heard it here appreciate first. that. The over the, over the pants so handy experience. I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little airport fun mm -hmm. of my boy Zach. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for coming in, man. Thanks for taking the time to come and chat with us today. Hell yeah. um, if you're out there in the town of Banff, keep your eyes peeled to the posters and everything. Get Zach out there. Go see one of his sets because... Uh, and uh, I think in a few years, once maybe he's on a bigger show than ours, we'll be uh, thankful to have him on. Definitely. Oh, hell so, yeah. yeah. Once I get a coach, lots. maybe I'll start a podcast, you know? So there we'll you see. go. Yeah, we'll come on yeah. your podcast. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I we like can co podcast. That'd be sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right on. Well, we're going to cut back to the show here. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks, Zach, for coming Thanks, so much. Um, cool. We'll see you guys back here shortly. Heck yeah. Thanks. Live in the studio. Um, great interview with Zach. It was great having him in this morning. Matt, what did you think about that? Oh man, the kid's a legend. I loved his set. Uh, like we said earlier, when we saw him originally, it was his third set and, uh, he rolled up there and yeah, kind of walked up like real timid and then just hammered. I was like, holy shit, where did this kid come from? Like he just, he just absolutely destroyed it. It was nuts. Absolutely. So keep your eyes and ears out uh, to the Banff comedy scene for some Zach Andrews action. He's got some stuff lined up for you. You can even oh, tell like his airport thing, like that's oh, going to yeah. be, that's going to oh, be a good one once he works it out. You know what I'm if saying? If he throws that in the set, dude, it's <laughs> good. It's going to be an absolute banger by the time he's done with it. Killer, like, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> what did he say? It's like getting an overpants handy from action. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, holy. Oh, fuck it. So it again, big, big thank you to Zach for coming in with us today big time, uh, big time we're gonna move on to a couple posts here before we do we got one that we forgot to clip because it was pretty close to the show but i'm just gonna read it off for you here i don't like to have my phone on so i'm gonna just read this and get rid of it let's go um so this is an overheard in banff post it says um the suggestions for revision in the arp which is the area redevelopment plan for the train station um they are out in the town of banff minutes from yesterday Gondola gone, further environmental studies and other good stuff. Mandatory housing moved up between five to ten years. Bam fights were heard, in my opinion. You never get everything you hope for. Council hard at work. So uh, this post here says, again, see Town of Banff Minutes. Um, you could do that. You can find them on the Town of Banff website, or you can tune in to the Overheard Podcast, and we'll do it for you. Oh, you went? Yes, yes. I was checking this out today. Nice, nice. There you go. Um, so as mentioned, a couple of good things. I think all good things um, based on the minutes that I read. Um, it is kind of lots of legal jargon, and it's very dry reading. Um, but I have a few quotes here. So just as mentioned, um, Staffacom must be provided for five to 10 years. I believe that's going to be for all businesses that are going to be down there. So there has a certain amount of staff come allotted if they're going to be opening more businesses at least these people that are going to come work these businesses aren't going to be in the pool yeah, no fighting doubt. for apartments with no everyone doubt. else <laughs> um, i think that's kind of the main thing that they're trying to avoid with new development which is great um i think five to Fair ten enough. years there was a comment i think the first comment i forget who it was was saying five to ten years is kind of the bare minimum it should be permanently which i agree with um <clears throat> but again once these once these houses are built, once these staff yeah. comms are built, well, they're not going to be torn down for commercial. Like, no, if anything, yeah, they'll be sold and <clears throat> people can rent them or move into them or whatever. So I think that's a step in the right direction. Um, one of the motions that I read was pretty cool was, well, I don't know. It depends. Pretty cool. Depends who you ask. But 
um, clarifying that in addition or as an alternative to surface parking, multi-level parking structures could also be explored at a future date if seem if deemed financially feasible. So basically, right. um, that will be for the south and the north parking lot. That if they find in the future that people are using them and um, they are being successful at having people park there in the intercept parking, that maybe a multi-level structure could be down the pipe in the future. Um, again, cross that bridge when we get there. I feel like these places are already paved, so animals aren't going to be using them. Might as well build up to alleviate um, the parking issues in the summertime. So again, um, just something that they kind of clarified in the wording that yes, multi-level structures could be, um, explored in the future. Um, another cool part, all future developments must follow the impact assessment act, which I guess is a set of laws that, uh, force developments to yeah. follow environmental impact studies and that kind of stuff. Well, being um, in the park. Yeah. Of course. Okay. So again, more more good news. The last bit of good news, and this one's a bit of a mouthful here. And this is um, I tra I transcribed it pretty much word for word from the minutes. So the aspirational Norquay gondola terminus has been deleted in its entirety, and the new section or wording to be drafted with an emphasis on transportation services and future multimodal forms of mass transit included but not limited to buses shuttles on-demand vehicles trains aerial transit bicycle and ride sharing services so basically what that means is the gondola plan is canceled there will be that no that crazy ass one that was supposed to go from the ski hill down to like the main town area and then so, like somewhere else like that seemed fucked don't uh, don't quote me word for word on this. I do have a contact with the train station ARP that I could contact for more information. But it was to my understanding that they wanted to do a gondola from the train station parking lot to Norway was kind of the initial plan with the whole parking lot and Lyricon thing. For what? And, um, for a casino, potentially. At Norway? Yeah. They're going to put a casino in fucking Norway. <laughs> that was the whispers that I heard. Again, whether this was whispers, whether this was truth. Um, please don't take it as truth because I don't know that it is. Um, but again, now the gondola is not happening. So that's crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think an extra gondola would be unnecessary, especially to Norway. The infrastructure there is pretty old to begin with. Um, and the road is kind of a nice, fun experience to drive up and down. It's not that bad. And even in the middle of winter when we're having the worst weather, um, people are still getting up and down there. Um, so some good news from the train station ARP area redevelopment plan. Um, all good news. The town is, um, you know, doing their part. I'm actually kind of leaning more towards for it. If they can actually get a half decent passenger setup yeah, no where people doubt. can take the train in from the city and then no have doubt. a nice welcome area to then they can go explore band from there. That might be a cool solution to our summer problems. Yeah. Just the thought. No doubt. Anyways, moving on to overheard and math posts. Let's go. Oh yeah. Tick season's back. Yeah, check your shit. Uh, I guess this was out uh, in BC. Someone went out mountain biking and found this on their clothes. So, tech season's back. If you're walking your pets and shit, just uh, give them the old uh, once over, you know, when, when they get inside. And um, I mean, yeah, it's that time of year. The bugs are coming back. Those are a few that we have in the friggin' mountains. What have we got? Like ticks and mosquitoes? There are a few seasons that we do have to be mindful, and this being one of it, as it warms up and that long grass starts to grow, those ticks love to hang out in the long grass. So this post reads, Tick season. Back from mountain biking in BC this evening. Just found two on me. Please check after outdoor activities. Um, again, be mindful out there. I'm a long-haired dude. I Actually, the only time I've ever had a tick encounter i actually happened to feel it land on me which was pretty oh, crazy weird. that's crazy i was disc golfing at the nordic center throwing some discs down there and i felt it kind of land behind my ear like i could feel it messing around uh -huh. and then i took it kind of off me it didn't latch on me because it didn't hurt and i just kind of flipped it around i was like holy fuck that's a tick ditched it and uh yeah was very mindful from that day on <laughs> oh geez all right, well, on to uh, another one here. We got some uh, local mental health awareness. Let's get So this one here was posted uh, by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police in Alberta. Um, May 6th to 10th is Banff Mental Health and Addiction Week. So 
Um, it is the first one ever. It's a vision of the Banff Mineral Springs Hospital Community Board to create awareness and build a community response to reduce stigma to the mental health and addiction concerns that reach into every facet of our community. Um, I will agree with you there. Um, no doubt. It yep. definitely impacts a lot of people in this town. affected me. Um, that's where I went when I was in my biggest it's, crisis of uh, alcoholism was the Mineral Spring Hospital to talk some counselors well, there. I, I think it's just where we live, right? There's it's all service industry, and that's ten, that just tends to be an industry that you know gets hit pretty hard with like drinking and then substance abuse. And For sure, high-stress jobs yeah. lead to high-stress activities outside. Yeah. Also, I think that we're all kind of thrill seekers in that sense. You know what I mean? Like we're all yeah. here to ski, snowboard. We live that fast paced life. It just kind of is more prevalent in thrill seeking behavior than, than other places. You know what I mean? Um, the post continues to read that over 30 community partners have come together to create a week of free preventative programs for you to take time for self care, uh, to connect and have conversation about your mental health and addiction. Um, so big shout out to Banff RCMP, Mineral Springs, Town of Banff for putting this on. Um, we have another slide here moving on that will show you a whole bunch of the activities that are going on as well. Yeah, so it looks like, oh geez. I it's a very a packed on. flyer. Um, you will see this on Overheard in Banff. You will see it on Banff Community Connection. You will see it on the um, RCMP Facebook page as well. So just a list of all types of events, um, community sessions, yeah, speakers, all on the topic of mental health and addictions. Um, so if you're curious about it, I know I'm, I'm always curious about it. You know, um, helping people is always a bit one thing that I love to do. A lot of people came out to help me in my time of need. So, uh, yeah, if anyone needs some help, don't be shy to reach out to the pod. No doubt. Um, yeah. Problems are real out there. So you're not alone. If you're struggling, please, please reach out. Hells yeah. Well, on to some more funny, lighthearted ones here. Yeah. Uh, this one's great. I'm sure I've seen this somewhere before, but I don't remember where, but this is awesome. So yeah, this one here uh, just reads, when you and the landscape wear the same outfit, and it's literally the back of a like an RV, and they've got a picture of Moraine Lake. Is that Moraine? No, Maybe think... Bow Lake, something like that? I don't know. Either way, it's got a picture of this lake, and the mountains, like, behind it in real life line up perfectly they with, match up absolutely yeah, perfectly, perfectly. With, um, for those yeah listening on spotify um they match up perfectly it's crazy all the cruise canada rvs have a backdrop yeah. of an iconic scene in canada so this one happens to just be driving past one of the iconic scenes that is <laughs> imprinted on the back of it so pretty beautiful shot whoever got this big big shout out it's got 333 likes and reactions so um pretty crazy stuff great shot oh god it's awesome um well the next one i'm sure most people would uh would like if this one came true overnight here <clears throat> oh damn i remember this one <laughs> so this one reads what a deal i really wish they were bound by the prices on these signs Anyone have any old pictures of Banff when fuel prices were actually that low? It's a picture from the shell um, in the middle of town with a price that reads regular gas at 65 cents or six. Yeah, 65.9 cents. 65.9 cents. <laughs> I'm a kid of the 90s myself. I remember rolling. Oh, yeah. Late 90s. Some of my earliest memories were seeing gas at 63 cents a liter. Oh, yeah. I think we're paying a dollar more than that these days. Oh, easy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, easy. Yeah. Big time. Uh, like, it used to be way. Like, I remember it being, yeah, super, super low. I've seen articles somewhere saying that actually, with the price of gas, they will never, ever come back down again because people just get used to paying yeah. more and more and more and they That's can just justify it. paying more and more and more. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy that we live in an oil producing province and somehow gas prices never seem to go down. Yeah, that's a good point. That's uh, probably not made completely into gasoline here. Might have something to do. I don't know, man. I... Steak's pretty expensive here, though, too. And we got all the good steak. That's what I'm saying. Cost of living's going up. We wish we could have gas well, at 65 points. What's, what's happening is you're paying more and getting less. That's all there is to it. Shrinkflation is what <laughs> it's called. You're paying more, oh, you're God. getting less. Well, this this next uh this next post, what did I call it? Clidiots? Oh god, yes. Please. It in involves a cliff and a bunch of idiots. Well, maybe just one, but there we go. 
I'd say one particular idiot. <laughs> um, even if you're watching on YouTube, this one's kind of hard to see. But down near the bottom, just above the river, you can see a big, big patch of green. And there's a little speck of red up top. And that is how the post reads, is one brave soul. So someone has hiked down. This is like right at the crest yeah, this is like of Surprise the Bow Falls. This is like, yeah, they climb down. The, there's like a little gully from Surprise Corner. And there's one person right down oh, in God. there. Extremely dangerous. If you're watching and you're planning on visiting Banff or you're here, you're new to town. Don't do not do, do that. This. Like, uh, people have died doing exactly that in the town of Banff and been seriously injured. Yep. Uh, especially now that the water's super low. If you go over those falls when the water's low, you are hitting every single rocks rock. oh, on yeah. the way down. Oh, a lot of them. Um, it is dangerous when the river is full. Oh, yeah. I've only heard of people doing it in kayaks and water vessels like once or twice in my 10 to 15, like Yeah, 15 but years I don't think that guy in. made it so well. The last guy that did it in a canoe, he uh, fucked himself up pretty yeah, good. Yeah, so, that wasn't my uh, uh, choice, um, I don't think. But Hopefully this guy made it out okay. But um, shit, super dangerous behavior, man. There's a way more chill way to go just over the crest. I guess if you're looking at it, lookers right of here yeah. is Secret Beach, which yeah. is still... A pretty strenuous climb. This is just straight rock face. And this guy's got no harness, no ropes, no nothing. So oh, it's insane. You can see how steep it is, dude. Yeah. Like the trees are basically growing straight up, like Super pretty much gnarly. perpendicular to the wall. The guy's a maniac. You see people do it every year, too. And it's just, I, 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 I mean, go for it. Well, all, the all tour the grand, is like, man. it's all for the grant. The tour groups are starting. I biked up there, uh, Surprise Corner yesterday, I think, with Nat. Me and Nat, a little. Evening stroll was such a beautiful night. We took the bikes out, went up Surprise Corner, and I noticed out of the corner of my eye on the other side of the river, same thing. Some tourists had jumped down over the barrier. Uh, because the river's so low yeah, right yeah. now, there's tons of rocks, right? But they were probably, I want to say, five meters below where, like, what is it? Where the fence is, where you're not supposed to go over. So oh, they've dude, climbed over brutal. and taken pictures. There's a whole family of them. Incredibly dumb. Those fences are there for a reason. Stay away. But up on Surprise Corner, actual tour buses, man. Like, tour buses are here. Oh, it has no. begun. Oh. Um, the longest weekend I mean, of the year is I about really to start. Um, yeah, summer's here. So uh, we're going to see more of those campers, more of those tour buses. So strap on, get ready. Summer is upon us. Oh, this next one is fucking great. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> So this one reads, pretty sure I saw these two dudes in town today. Oh, fuck yeah. And it's uh, Beavis and Butthead with mustaches on. <laughs> um, those of you working in the service industry, you probably had a pretty local weekend last week. Um, I saw a few of these. There's pro if you work in a kitchen, there's somebody with a haircut and mustache like this working in your kitchen probably right now as we speak. <laughs> For sure. So the <laughs> mullet mustache look is getting way more popular. It's getting out of control. Um, pretty wild weekend here in the town of Banff. There was a wine and food festival or something. Oh, I like the cocktail festival. The money pit festival. <laughs> so many, all the cocks. Um, yeah, I don't know if you went and checked it out. <laughs> whatever good for you um i don't know these festivals are kind of uh um, <laughs> seem to seem to always be a little bit more expensive um for what you get than what they're worth but hey that's just my opinion if you went and had a good time let us know in the chat um but yeah pretty local weekend it was pretty wild <laughs> saw some pretty uh interesting haircuts interesting fashion choices around town no doubt, no, being uh <laughs> no doubt. being mostly albertans through the <laughs> through the, the, the town um but yeah we should probably move on before we get too much into oh, this God. well we usually have from one of our local uh weed shop weed shops we usually have a kind of best of yes every week and we didn't have one this week so we did find someone did their kind of own, yes. their own best of on uh, Overheard. So this one was Bar with the Best Sipping Whiskey slash Whiskey Collection. So this one here, uh, the first comment, obviously, St. James Gate. Yep. Got the best whiskey collection by far. Um, curated, I believe, by my man Hendo. Yep. Um, he took over as a consultant there for a bit, revamped their whole whiskey selection. They got flights. Cool. They have older whiskeys nice. that you maybe probably have never seen before. Probably can't so. get anywhere else in town. 
Um, the Fairmont is also brought up. The Fairmont, if you're looking for some high end stuff, they always have high end stuff on hand in multiple venues Nourish. there. Nourish, man. The final comment here Nourish has a fun whiskey bourbon selection. Big shout out to oh, Nourish, um, Caleb, and Buff, buddies of mine. They curate a nice Great little whiskeys. cocktail program there. So oh, big shout yeah. out to them as well. It's usually um, where I go. Like, if I'm going to go for a good whiskey, I'm pretty much going to Nourish, sitting down, chilling at the bar. Absolutely. Like a nice little old fashioned, you know, something, something, something a little different. But. If you are um, out in the town in Canmore, um, the local downtown on 8th Street also has award winning cocktails. Nice. Um, so check them out if you're uh, on the Canmore side of things. We probably have some listeners down in Canmore. Or what I used to love to do when I was drinking was take the bus and go to Canmore, party my face off, and take the bus back. Nice. Just because it's like a it feels like you're on vacation. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. If you don't have your car in Canmore and you're just chilling and you're just like in the big city, you in, know? The, ba- in the, yeah. <laughs> the big city of Canmore. Oh so big shout God. out to Canmore, big shout out to the local on eighth street. We'll get to a little bit more on that later. Yeah. Um, other whiskey selections. I don't know. I mean, are you a whiskey guy? What do you, Yeah, I mean, I'm a whiskey guy. I like a good, you know, Japanese whiskey. Like, Japanese whiskey is oh, yeah, pretty man, clean, man. That's where it's at. Um, I think, I think they got it kind of nailed right now. As far as whiskeys go, there oh, was um, Shoku. Shoku actually has a decent little whiskey selection. There they, you go. Yeah, Especially some, if you wanted more Japanese whiskey. Yeah, they got some Japanese uh, stuff in there, some decent bourbons. Uh, go check last them time out. I was in there, that's some pretty cool stuff. Other than that, um, I don't know. I guess we don't really have like a whole lot of like we do have cocktail bars here, but it's not, it's not like. If you go to a major city, you go to 10 different cocktail bars. You can bars get some pretty cool eat. cocktails in the town of Banff, oh, for hell sure. Yeah. Um, like we already mentioned, Nourish, like Caleb yep. that runs that cocktail program there, has some great stuff. Actually, one time served me a non-alcoholic Negroni, which was pretty sweet. Damn. Um, so what I like to go there with Nat a lot because vegetarian, yeah. healthy yep. food. Um, and yeah, whip me up a non-alcoholic Negroni, which I didn't think was possible, but it was delicious. So big shout out. Um, they do have non-alcoholic cocktails there too. So. Cool. Uh, Good to know. More and more people, you know, you're getting off the booze. You oh, can yeah. still enjoy a nice, cool looking cocktail without yeah. getting fucked up. Yeah. You can still drive home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't, but well, anyway. yeah, you're not, yeah, maybe not you, but <laughs> oh, God. Well, uh, you want to move on to a little bit of a local event? Yes. We yeah. have some very special footage coming for you. We all know about this big, big party that's going on on Thursday night, the OB Trice D12. Robbie G show. Um, so it's almost sold out. Yeah. Um, we're going to help them sell some tickets. If you guys are looking for tickets, get on gonna, it. You're going to yeah. want to get on it because they're selling out quick. Um, how you're going <clears> to <throat> do that, you're going to get up my boy, Big Kev. He was in the chat earlier. Um, one of the local guys that helps put on these shows here in the town of Banff. You can reach him by text at 204 918 um, once again, that phone number is 204-918-0240. Shoot him a text and you can get tickets directly from him. No doubt. Um, it's going to be a great time. Oh, man, this is going to be a banger of a show. Mel's is going to go off. It's uh, Yeah, this is going to be one of those events where it's like, okay, if you didn't go, you kind of fucked up. But 100%. I'm going to be there for sure. Um, yeah. Big shout out to Robbie G., um d12 and ob trice i'm very very pumped to see some hip-hop in the town of banff you usually have to travel to calgary for these types of shows um but hopefully we'll be getting more and more of these bigger events big shout out to melissa's the venue no holding doubt. it down um no big doubt. shout out to robbie g we got a little video queued up uh i think from his show in Kelowna. so we're gonna cut to that give you guys a little taste of what's coming on thursday night let's go let's go get down every time they know it's really yeah yeah I just wanna cash, yeah. I just wanna big booty bitches that too much ass, yeah. I just wanna look around here, yeah. How are you doing? Good luck. Of the matter, they might be bad, but you are the baddest. Yeah, they got that, but you got the status. I got the bag, I don't carry the baggage. No time for the people who waste mine. Slow wine, people who are great fine. I don't mind any people who hate mine. I go grind, see how I make mine. I just want the cash.
Uh, get yourself some tickets. Once again, you're going to text my boy Big Kev at 204 918 Um, Once again, I want to give a big shout out to the local downtown 8th Street Canmore. Um, give them a big shout out in the mix as well, Big Kev. Thanks for uh, supporting the pod. Thanks for uh, working with us on these uh, shows coming up. Um, yeah, I'm pumped. I'm excited to go to a hip hop show in the town. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be sweet. Everybody's going to be there. Check it out. Get your tickets in advance because they will be selling out soon. There you go. There it is, Big Kev. Here we go. Big shout out to Big Kev in the chat. Don't miss out. No, nah, um, like these shows don't come to Banff that often. These big shows. We all know how it goes here. Wicked local music scene. But, you know, if you want to go see, you know, a bigger act, kind of don't really have a lot of, uh, you know, good options. So, bango, bango, here we go, dude. It's going to be a banger of a night down there. Well, the best part is you don't have to travel. You can <coughs> stay here in the town of Banff. You can take the bus in from Lake Louise. You can take the bus in from Canmore yep. and come party with Robbie G, D12, and ob trice let's and go. myself and matt might be there too depends if you can get the time yeah let's but, go but uh i'll definitely be there you'll see us partying letting loose listening to some good hip-hop in the town of banff boom boom um our next guest next week is going to be parks canada um still waiting to hear the confirmation <laughs> if you're listening please get a hold of me uh email me back uh, we're gonna love to have you on talk about some animal safety we mentioned the ticks earlier the bears are waking Bear up season's on um, cougars the elk are gonna start getting down oh, too yeah. soon so <laughs> that, that'll be wild yeah, yeah that's wanna... always a, a wild time of year watching tourists try not to get punted by elk yes you want to stay away from <laughs> those elk when uh, they're all horned up man they get pretty vicious <laughs> oh, up there. yeah dude um other than that big thanks to zach again big thanks to robbie g i don't know if that audio worked maybe that's what they were saying audio no but, i had uh, us muted i had us muted while we were uh listening to the the audio is what it was and then i forgot to unmute when we came back so shout out to beeps thanks beeps <laughs> no problems <laughs> um yeah so big shout out to everyone today who tuned in the chat's probably our most active chat ever thanks to big kev thanks to just beeps thanks to pod guy 420 who's always Let's in there go um making jokes um yeah that's it for this week like every week see See you next next tuesday. tuesday